Hello everybody, this is Kyrix, welcoming you back to Let's Play Pony Fantasy 6. Now, this is once again post-commentary Kyrix, so please bear with me. As we pick up, we're seeing what happened when Discord moved those statues out of alignment. Welcome to the end of the world as we know it, and I ain't feeling so fine. So there goes that. Lots of Imperials, several citizens. Oh god, oh jam. Screwball? Mountains rising. The airship splits in half. To this day, I don't know how that happened. How could the effects of the Earth's crust split a floating ship? And there's a bunch of people casting Ultima. And if you pay close attention, you'll see continents ripping in half on that globe down there. Now, as I mentioned in the previous video, this is actually take two. Because my original take, I died at the part where uh, you recruit Luna. I went into the house, Trixie had inferior magic, and she got her flank kicked. So, yeah. But this one's much better. The only real flaw with this one is that my commentary didn't stick because I turned off the freaking microphone. And now... Now... We get to play in the world of ruin. What's left after Discord 1? And I cannot stress that enough. Discord 1. You know... People talk about who's their favorite Final Fantasy villain. Lots of people like Sephiroth. I, aside from Kefka, my second favorite would be Kuja, but... Kefka and Discord freaking won, okay? The world, it's just gone. There's no plants growing. <clears throat> He's decimated places. And then there's this crap little island. Now, um... There are two ways this can go, and it's kind of ironic because in the in the initial playthrough that got scrapped, I did the quote-unquote successful one where I managed to keep Sethisto alive. And I'm glad that on this one that wasn't the case because it's a much better scene if he dies. As cruel as that sounds, it's much faster and much better to just let him die. And you'll see why in a couple minutes. But I'm going to talk about the successful ending first, which is basically he gets up out of bed and he's like, oh, thank you, you nursed me back to health, I knew you'd do it, you know. And then he takes you downstairs and shows you the raft he was building and he sends you on your way and that's the end of the story. But this is a very annoying section of the game. If you're not flat out trying to kill him, then... Uh, this part could take upwards of an hour to get him nursed back to health. It's it's much faster to kill him, and it's a much better scene to kill him. And there's really nothing to be gained at all from keeping him alive. There's no special item, there's no special real dialogue, you know? Nothing secret. Matter of fact, it actually helps to, to let him die because if you've never played this before, it'll tip you off to a location that you never would have known about otherwise. And in other games, that's fine, but in this game, it's kind of important. Now, I mentioned this twice before in failed commentaries, but uh, you're not going to hear it because those commentaries didn't exist. But Celis and Sid had a... a a grandfather-granddaughter kind of relationship in her words, at least in American. Here, it's a case of Sethisto stuck with a hot unicorn, and he's going to make the most of it, and she's like, well, eh, what are my options, you know? And, uh... I took, as I mentioned before, in this particular playthrough, I took the time to actually level up her spells... So she has a lot of her level 2 stuff. She's much better off than she otherwise would be. 
And I'm sorry about the yawning. I've just been exhausted the past couple days, and I don't know why. I haven't been doing anything particularly grueling, you know? But, oh, I hate these fish. Sometimes they swim, and they swim, and they just won't come to the shoreline where you can catch them. That's right, you fishy little bastard. Come here. Come here. There we go. That's a fish. There are four kinds of fish. Good fish, rotten fish, fish, and just a fish. Supposedly, rotten fish is the worst. It's actually been my experience that if you feed him just a fish, it makes him really sick. Fish, I think, either gives him one point or keeps him a little bit closer. And a good fish, or a yummy fish, rather, is the good one. Now, because I'm actively trying to just get this over with, and I secretly want him dead at this point, I'm catching all the fish and just trying to speed him down the recovery track in the bad direction to speed him literally down to the friggin' death track. So, just put him on, a, on the express elevator down to dead land as quickly as I can. Behold, a great and powerful fish. And you get a general sense by his dialogue of how quickly he's slipping away. Just a fish. And he's dead. Just like that. Two feedings. Trixie is such a horrible cook that she fed him twice and he died of food poisoning. That's my new headcanon. Trixie can't cook. But yes, this is a beautiful and rather emotional scene. Even more so with the retranslation, simply because in American they they really censored this scene. Or at least they censored the dialogue, but uh, scenes like this are the reason I can't get into Final Fantasy VII. Scenes like this in the entirety of Final Fantasy IV. This this is a character driven to and beyond the brink of despair. And you want me to feel for a little flower girl who got stabbed to the back. Especially since all the records indi or all the uh, evidence indicates that she didn't die from that stab wound, she died from Cloud freaking drowning her. But this this scene just I'm just going to shut up and let you enjoy this scene. Well, maybe not enjoy, but here. That scene never fails to get to me, and it, it, it rarely fails to get to anyone who sees it, honestly. You have to be very jaded, or just emotionally dead, or have had to have seen that scene a hundred times for it not to affect you. So, yeah. But I mean, this... I'm going to go off on my Anti-7 rant a little bit longer. I mean, you... My first Final Fantasy was four. Well, two in America. And this, well, the game this is based on was my second. So, I, I played four, a game where your party just drops like flies. I mean, it comes out that not all of them that you think are dead actually die. But, nonetheless... You go through, if you've never played it before and you don't know, you treat every loss as if the character is dead and never coming back. And it just yo-yos you. I mean, some of them you find are dead, and some of them come back, and some of them re even rejoin the party. But uh, at that point, it's just, what do you do? And then this comes around, where you can permanently lose Shadow or Fluttershy, and then you have Trixie or Celis's attempted suicide. By the way, how did that letter get there? 
but you have their attempted suicide. And I'm supposed to be emotionally scarred because some girl got stabbed. I mean, to me, Eris was never even that great a character. You know, she was a healer, and her limit breaks, almost, uh, the, bulk, the bulk of them were healing spells when I need offense, you know? It's just... Ah. I I'm ruining this moment, I really am. And I should, but... The, the gist of the thing is, I don't like Final Fantasy 7 and 8. I don't despise 7. I despise the hype around it. I think it's a I think it's a mediocre game. I think it's a decent game. I don't think it deserves to be in the same company as the rest of the Final Fantasy series. And I know 8 doesn't. That game is horrible. 8's problem is they try to change fundamentally change too many things at once. When really any any two or three of those changes would have been fine. Like I happen to like the junction system. I happen to like the draw system. But when you combine the two, it cripples you. You know? You have a choice, good stats or powerful spells. I kind of like the idea that your spells can be limited by a number of uses based on what you draw. Or that you can junction your completed spells to your stats. But when you combine the two, it hurts. And... I don't know what the hell is possessing me to go with this direction. Because I happen to know for a fact the town I want is not in this direction. So, for some reason... I don't know why, but for some reason I'm meandering around the map. And I don't know why. And there's no reason for it, because I'm not fighting enemies, so I'm obviously not trying to get the last couple points for a spell. Oh, maybe the town I want is there. Yeah, that's right, never mind. I'm an idiot. I keep I keep confusing the towns. Yes, this is the town I want. It is entirely possible to skip this. I have never done it, and I do not advise it. Do not skip this. Having two party members instead of one makes all the difference in the world. Now let's trip a flag, shall we? Discord's Light of Judgment. We'll get to see with uh, rather horrifying detail what this looks like when he uses it for real. Now let me stress this. Luna is holding up a collapsing house with nothing but brute strength. I basically have it in my head, Canon, that... Celestia is the smart one, and Luna is the dangerous one, as far as power goes. And it pretty much stems entirely from this game, because Luna is the physical brute of the two. Or to put it more simply, Celestia is the carrot, and Luna is the stick. And here I am trying in vain to find a spell that will kill those things quickly. Because the more time I spend in menus healing myself, the less time I have to get through this. And these treasures, once you leave this place, are gone for good, and I want all of them because I'm that kind of person. I want it all. Yeah, I'm trying to see if it's worth getting rid of haste to up my damage or something. I'm trying everything I can to... Wow, I don't remember it being that shaky. I don't remember it being shaky at all. I hope that's in the game and not part of my recording. I can't fathom what would cause my recording to shake. Now, this one goes relatively smoothly. You know, considering... But yeah, it's kind of important if you want these treasures to get them all in one run, because you won't get a second run. And that's me hitting the fast forward a couple times, just to speed this along the way. To, uh, to clue you in, I marathoned the three videos. Uh, this one, the week before, and the week before that, plus the failed recording before this, were all done in one night. 
So at this point, I'm just fed up. I want to go to bed, you know? So I keep hitting fast forward for those couple scenes that uh, need to be done. And this is me deciding save the kid first and then see what I can grab. Spoiler alert, I do manage to get all the items. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Just because I get them doesn't mean it was an easy thing to do. Oh, and I will tell the story. When I first did this, I died. Because I couldn't... I couldn't see the kid. In this, he's nice and blue. But he's, he's a normal kid in Final Fantasy VI, and... I might have had my TV in black and white at the time, and he just blend... For whatever reason, he blended in with the scenery, and I couldn't see him. Now, the reason why I had a TV that was in black and white is because my TV was... pretty old by that point, and the color was going. I could maybe get about 20 minutes of color, and it required a rather elaborate ritual to perform. And it was about the time that I was seriously playing Final Fantasy III for the Super Nintendo. Which we know today is Final Fantasy VI, but, uh... Yeah, I played the bulk of this game originally in black and white, so I didn't know what half these colors were. And it's entirely possible that the kid was just lost in the scenery because it was in black and white. Yeah, that, that house is leveled. Hey, Luna. Yes, yes it does. See, I really like this game because this game puts Trixie in the situation Twilight is where she didn't want friends, but she has them, and now that she's had them, she doesn't want to lose them, you know? Now, Luna needs some magic. But what to give her? That'll do. Nudity does not become you, Princess Luna. You need stuff to hit people with. That'll do. I probably should talk to more of these ponies, but... They're just not that interesting. <laughs> they really aren't. Plus, keep in mind, I played, I played the original for years. I've spoken to every pony, or everybody. And in this game, I've spoken every, just about every pony, you know? And of course, it would not be a Kyrex LP unless I botched all of Luna's blitzes. And managed to forget that Trixie was packing a heel rod. Because she totally is. Yeah, a tent would be good right now. In a minute I'll realize that. And I'll use one. Because if you notice, my, my MP's kind of gone to hell because Trixie can't fight to save her life. Any minute now. Honestly, it'll probably happen after the next battle when I realize how low my magic is. This is the problem with post-commentary. I already know what's going to happen. I just don't quite remember when. You know? I guess I can take a moment to talk about my other Let's Plays. Um, by the time of this... Of this, uh... That this goes up, or... Well... <laughs> By the time of this commentary, I've nearly finished recording Pony Fantasy VI. I've got, at most, a half a dozen videos, I guess. I can't really say for sure until it's over, you know? But uh, I give it maybe half a dozen videos left to record. Crusader Ascenti, about the same. I have no idea how much uh, Mystery Dungeon is done, but 
Oh my god, I'm really getting into that story now. <clears throat> the point I last recorded, the story was starting to get really, really good. And I, I, I don't want to shamelessly plug my material, but I really advise, if you like this, watch the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Let's Play, because it's just really getting good. <coughs> um, Anubis and I have been having some scheduling difficulties. I can get him over here, but the problem is we generally only have time for one recording, you know? And that's just going from week to week, so Resident Evil's probably the one I'm the most behind on right now. And I also need to get off my butt and start doing some Pokemon Emerald, but... I think that pretty much covers all of my Let's Plays at the moment. There's the tent! No, no! You, oh, sleeping bag? Okay, sleeping bags. Whatever. The point is I used a restorative item. And that's all that matters, but, uh, yeah. I think that covers all my Let's Plays. I've got a couple more in the works. I've probably already told about them, but I'm kind of hesitant to speak up simply because if they're never finished for whatever reason... Oh, Pummel, okay. If for whatever reason they're not finished, they're never going to see YouTube. But I have a LEGO Clone Wars that's in the works. A friend of mine, uh, you he hasn't been seen on any of my videos as of this recording. But uh, my friend Reaper, who does a brief guest commentary on Clone Wars, is going to be doing Ring of Red with me. I'm planning to do uh, Dino Crisis 2. Oh, and uh, one I forgot was Mega Man. Mega Man Battle Network. I'm doing pretty good on that one, too. But, uh, let's see. Yeah, there's, there's a lot going on. I'm trying to keep a whole bunch of these things just churning out as much as I can, because... Oh, and uh, I completely skipped my mind. This is what's left of Ponyville. You notice that literally half the town is gone. It just doesn't exist anymore. And it's because the town's literally been cut in half. There's Twilight Sparkle. Hello, Twilight. Twilight, is there something you need to tell us? That's an awful lot of kids. And they're looking a little old, you know, for a year to, to have passed. Oh, that's another thing. I still can't even begin to comprehend how it is that Trixie stayed in a coma for a year and didn't die given that they had access to nothing medical and he, apparently Sethisto had to grind fish and get that down her throat somehow but uh, yeah yeah like I said I can't stress enough discord one Now that being said, victory is rarely forever, and we will beat Discord. Spoilers, we will beat him, but we lost this one, and we lost it in a big way. And it's just not, yeah. It, it's kind of hard to gloss over just how epically we failed to stop Discord. Or to even, I mean... Uh, by this point, everyone knows that Discord or Kefka is the real bad guy. But we didn't even know in the context of the story that we were stopping Discord. We thought we were stopping Gilda. And we failed. We, we didn't see Discord coming. And by the time we did, it was too late to do anything. And the thing is, even if Discord had died on the floating continent, this world would still be a crap hole. And this is a rather poignant moment that's coming up right here. The moment where she says, look, this is the second time I get to make the choice of whether I'm going to fight or not. And this time I'm not going to fight because look what fighting got me. Her decision to fight is what, in, in her mind at least, is what caused this whole disaster. 
And that's something that's glossed over in is the fact that Terra and Twilight, it's not just that they, they see these children here and they want to protect them. I think it's also a sense of guilt of if, if I had been stronger, I could have stopped Discord and this never would have happened. Because yes, moving the statues still would have ripped the world apart, but Ponyville and Mobley's were still relatively intact before the Light of Judgment hit. So that's all on Discord or Kefka, depending on the version of the game you're playing. Now, this is an interesting moment. You you do this and you think, oh well, I I'm not wearing weapons. Of course she's not going to hurt him. So you figure, okay, what's his weakness? His weakness is poison. So I'll hit him with his weakness, poison. Do you think, Twilight? Nothing. It's literally impossible to win this fight at this point. There's nothing Twilight can do. I don't care if you're level 99 and somehow managed to hit every single spell. She could, she could literally just hit him with Ultima until she dropped dead and never scratch him. So that that's an unwinnable situation, but uh, back to what I was saying. I think part of this is guilt. I mean, you'll see a lot of guilt, uh, and sadly, I didn't think of this in the original commentary, so you won't hit, hear it, but there, there's guilt. It just abounds in this. I mean, Twilight, she feels some guilt and manifests it as protecting the children. Applejack feels a sense of guilt partly for what happened to her own family and that leads her to do what she does. Celestia feels a sense of responsibility towards not being there for the people of Canterlot and getting them into a bad situation which will lead her to do something interesting. Apple Bloom's guilt over what happened to Vinyl Scratch will lead to her quest. And Applejack's guilt, continuing guilt, will lead to the, the quest that, as of yet, I have not filmed. But I will. I promise you. Rarity's guilt sends her completely off the freaking deep end. It really does. Um... Fluttershy, Sweetie Belle, Scootaloo, and Luna seem to have gotten out of this relatively unscathed, and... Rainbow Dash, we'll, you'll see her next week, and she's she's a mess. She really is. She didn't take this very well at all. I mean, the uh, I uh, even though a lot of the lines weren't changed, I really think the events of the World of Ruin hit the ponies harder than it ever hit the humans. And here's Seraphim. God, she sucks as a healer. And I suck at doing blitzes, but uh, that's beside the point. But yeah. I, and part of it is the fact that they were probably working... The, the guy who did this was partly working with the translated... Uh, translated lyrics. No, the, the, the direct... A more direct, uncensored translation, because he didn't have censors to go through. And part of it is that some of his own stuff is just written so much better. But... Uh, I believe this game is actually... Ponies aside, I think this game is superior to the original in many ways. At least in terms of the story, because... He had time to look at the, the English translation. The uncensored translation, the original Japanese, and all this stuff. And then put his own spin on it. And it really seems to work. And I'm sure some of you out there aren't really into the whole pony thing, which kind of makes me wonder why you're watching, but uh, I really think that even if you're not a fan of pony, you should give this a chance and just pretend that they're just weird-looking creatures and not ponies. Because there's a lot of inside jokes for the fandom, some of which I don't even get because I don't follow fan fiction, but there's also an amazingly well-done game and a really good story mixed in here. Which, like I said, I'm a huge fan of Six. Six is probably tied with Nine as my favorite, but it's amazingly well done. And, uh, yeah. Speaking of a mess, Twilight's kind of messed up right here.
See, this is the one thing I don't like is the translation here. Twilight is somewhat staying as their teacher, but she still answers to Mama, which is what Terra answered to. And I'll make reference to that when we finally do recruit her, which I think happens in the next couple weeks. Not next week. Next week is a whole bunch of other stuff. I think it's the week after, though. But, uh, it's... I don't like the way it was written because she, she answers to Mama and then she says, Teacher has to go, um, and weren't you just Mama three seconds ago? I mean, I suppose Mama could be a teacher, but it's just, yeah. But yeah, the, there's one perk to coming out of your way, and you do. You go way out of your way to get to this. And that is that even though you have to walk a long way, it does shorten the actual trip if you're smart enough to do what I'm about to do, which is find a nice little shortcut to where you actually have to go. And believe me, it does behoove you to find the shortcut, because otherwise, oh boy, there'd be a lot of random battles cut out. Now, um, if you notice, if you notice, there's a uh, forest down here. Now, can I pull it off? No, I cannot. Why? Because I am an idiot. Which I believe we established several videos ago, but hey, let's keep the theme running, shall we? Yeah, it didn't work first time, not gonna work the second time. At least not in this case, because it was obvious that thing was trying to suck out my MP instead of the other way around. I think this is a case of me practicing that move just to make sure I have it. That'll become apparent why in the next episode. But, uh... Chocobo Stable! Yes. This is such an invaluable thing. It's honestly probably the last time you'll ever need to use a choke well not need, but want to use a chocobo because we'll have an airship again soon enough. But this is one of those situations where you need the chocobo and you see that the end of this long strip of land? Yeah, that's where I'd have to walk. Now keep in mind everything from I'm going to say right here, roughly, well, a little bit back onward, it's, I would have had to walk all this, every step of it. And that's just nuts, it really is. And now, we go to Huffington. Yeah, we were probably both down to one hit point by that point. Oh, I hate when I hate when they do that. They just block you and get in your way and ugh. It makes me long for the old days of Exodus Ultima where you could kill anybody who messed with you. Seriously, that was a rare thing in that game. It, it was stupid to do so cuz you trip up the guards, 
But like if there was a kid that was just in your way, you could literally kill him and then walk past him. Now, it's important to talk to all of these to trip the next flag, otherwise it won't work. There's a character named Latia in the town, apparently. And there we go, now we can run into their leader, Latia. Or Latia. I keep wanting to call her Latias. And there she is. With her fruit roll up hair. I'm sorry, her hair looks like a big fruit roll up and it's making me hungry. Now notice Luna doesn't have any lines here, and that's because she also didn't have any lines when during the whole with Twilight. The reason for that is the game does not know for sure that I will have Luna at this point, because it is possible to skip her. It's not advisable, it's not smart, but it's entirely possible. And likewise with Twilight, it's kind of a double-edged sword, because on the one hand, it doesn't know that I'm going to have Luna, but on the other hand, it doesn't know that I'm going to have Trixie either, because you don't have to do that to trip Latia here. You could just unlock her, you could just skip skip Ponyville, and skip uh, Manhattan, was it, no, not Manhattan, Baltimore, you can skip Baltimore and Huffington completely, no, I'm sorry, Baltimore and Ponyville completely and just go straight on to Huffington. Again, not a good idea, number one, you're skipping out on Luna, which is much needed because Trixie can get killed real easy when she's just by herself. Likewise, there's a boss coming up, and you're going to want Luna around. And secondly, there's an Esper that Twilight, Twilight's little scenario will give you. But anyway, we're going to... We're, we're getting close to the end of this video, so I better get ready to wrap things up. It was shortly after doing the next video. Or no, it was, it was right at the end of when I did this video. I accidentally hit the record button again and hit it twice. I hit one to stop and then double tapped it and it started recording again. And, and I thought to myself, oh god, please tell me I didn't just miss this whole recording. So I went back to see where it left off and realized that it ate all the sound. All of it just gone. There was no microphone and I'm like, oh god, no. And sure enough, I checked the two before it, and same thing. But anyway, we are going to leave off outside of Catalot Cave. So, this has been Post Commentary Kyrix with Let's Play Pony Fantasy VI. And I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next week. Bye.